Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar, and this is our first lesson in working with linked lists. We're going to talk about what a linked list is and uh, how it's different from an array. We're going to talk about how to create and use the linked list class that's built into Java. And we're also going to talk about how to create and use the list iterator class that's also built into Java in order to work with uh, the stuff in the middle of our linked lists. So what's a linked list anyway? Well, uh, it's a homogeneous aggregate non-contiguous data structure. And if you think back to our unit on arrays, you'll notice that a lot of those buzzwords are pretty much the same with one critical difference, and that's the word non-contiguous. Unlike an array where all the boxes in an array are stored in consecutive locations in memory, in a linked list that's not the case. Uh, all bets are off really. They're scattered all over your memory. Uh, and they are just connected to each other by these links, which is where the data structure gets its name. The easiest way to think about that is it's kind of like um, cars in a train or subway. If you've ever seen how that works, you know that the two cars in a subway or a train have these little hooks you know, that hold the train together. Um, those are called couplings. And when we look at the uh, implementation of a linked list, you'll see that we're going to create those couplings as well in order to connect the data in our linked list together. Let's talk a little bit about what linked lists are good for and not so good for. Um, just like arrays, they're very easy to create and relatively easy to work with. Um, the real advantage of using a linked list as compared to a packed array, uh, which is the, the correct array to compare it to, is that with a linked list, you can very quickly add items um, or remove items from the middle of a linked list. You don't have to worry about moving things over, shifting things around, filling in holes, because in a linked list you just have those couplings to hold things together and um, everything just has to get reconnected. Um, that's the, the advantage. The disadvantage to using a linked list is that you don't get instant random access to the items that you want. In an array or an uh, array list you could just say get parentheses two and it would go straight to that item in the list. With a linked list, there's no such thing as the get function. Um, you really have to begin at the head. You have to get in the engine of your linked list and then you have to walk all the way back uh, till you get to the car that you're looking for. And we'll see how to do that with an iterator. Well, let's talk about the linked list class. It's built into Java, just like ArrayList. You have to import it, just like ArrayList. And the syntax is almost exactly the same. The only difference is you have to say linked list instead of ArrayList you still have to put the type in angle brackets because just like an array a linked list is homogeneous. Um, as far as working with a linked list the methods that you're going to be using in this unit anyway are a little restrictive in that they only allow you to work with the two ends of the list the front and the back uh, and we've got methods corresponding methods for adding elements getting elements and removing elements and they are pretty self-explanatory they do pretty much what you would expect to see there and we'll see an example of that in a little bit but that's not really good enough um, there are very only a very few applications where you can get by with just touching the the front and the end of a linked list most of the time you need to still be working with the stuff that's in the middle and so in order to do that you have to use this thing called an iterator an iterator, uh, let me just say right away, I hate iterators. I hate them with a passion. I think they're really irritating to work with, but you need to know how to use them in case you come across them. Um, what you have to do, the best way to think about an iterator is it's kind of like being uh, a variable that points to uh, an item in your linked list and that you can move it backwards and forwards. Uh, it'll show you sort of the position where you are in the list they're really awkward to work with which you're about to see in a minute um, they don't actually point at the boxes in a linked list The best way to think about them is that they always live kind of in between two items in the list or they or they might be uh, in front of the first item in the list or they might be after the last item in the list but they're always um, in between uh, elements the way to create a list iterator is kind of interesting because you don't use a constructor like you're used to with most objects. If you think way back to 
uh, when we were talking about the number format class. You might remember that you had to call class methods like get percent interest or get percent instance, get currency instance to create a new number format object. And with list iterator, it's the same, although it's a little bit simpler. So to create a list iterator, you have to put the type in angle brackets, um, and then you just say the name of the list dot list iterator, and that will return to you your list iterator object, which you can assign to your variable name. Now, working with a list iterator, like I said, it's kind of annoying. Um, let me lay it out for you. In order to move your list iterator forwards and backwards in the list, you would call the next method and the previous method. And, as a side effect, these two methods each return the item that they hop over. So if you imagine uh, a list with three items in it, and you create a list iterator, the first time you call next, the list iterator, iterator is going to hop over the first item, and it's going to be in between the uh, first two items. And it will return the first item that it reads. The next time you call next, it will return the second item. The next time, it will return the third item. If you try to call it again, your program will actually crash, because you can't go past the end of a list. And so, in fact, if you see those uh, two methods at the bottom there, has next and has previous, those are Boolean methods that you really, to be safe, should always use before you try to call next or previous just to make sure your program doesn't crash. Now, What else can you do with iterators? You can add items. The way that that works is every time you call add it inserts a new item after the item that um, iter is after in the list um, and then what it does is it makes the uh, moves the iterator past the new item so that you're, it's ready for you to add more. So if you call uh, add like three times in a row, it'll add those three items to the list in the order that you call add. There's a remove method, and the remove method removes the last item that you passed over. So you need to call next or previous at least once before each call to remove, otherwise your program will crash. I told you list iterators are annoying, but let's see how they work. So if we go to JGrasp, um, here I've got a program, just to kind of summarize it. The first section really covers the stuff we talked about, about how to work with linked list methods. We're going to create a linked list, and then we are, we are going to add a whole bunch of uh, random integers to that list. Then we're going to create a list iterator, and we are going to traverse the entire list, and we are going to check to see if the number that we passed over, remember that's what next returns, um, is even. And if it is, we're going to remove it. Notice that we have to call um, previous in order to jump backwards, and then we can remove the item um, that we have in the list. So let's see what that looks like when we actually run it, um, because JGRASP has a pretty slick um, linked list diagram. And when we run it, so let's run down through here. So, let me get that out of the way. Okay, the first number is a 1. It's not even, so we're not going to do anything. The next item is an 8. We're going to call previous to jump back, and then we're going to remove that. Notice that it stitches everything back up together. This is the advantage of a linked list, is that it can very quickly and easily make changes to your linked list without you having to do a lot of extra work. We'll pass over the 1, remove the 0, remove the 14, and so on and so forth. And by the time we're all done, we've removed all the even numbers from the list. So I would encourage you to go back, take a look in your book, or take a look at this lesson again about the methods that are part of iterators and the methods that are part of linked lists. We talked about what a linked list is. We talked about how to create it. We talked about its pros and cons. And we also, unfortunately, talked about iterators and how they actually work. All right, you're all set.